Welcome back to All Hans on Deck, part two of our engine repower. In part one, we got the old engine out of the boat. We cleaned up the bilge box underneath of it, and we removed an old and rusted up seacock and through haul that needed servicing. Today, we start to undo all of that damage that we did. So what we need to do is prep the space for the new engine and actually install the new engine. So what that entails is rebuilding the bilge box with fiberglass and painting it, installing the new through hull, and actually getting the engine in here. It's going to be a lot of work, but it's going to very much be worth it because it will be fantastic having kind of a new beating heart of our boat in place and just something that we won't have to worry about when we're out on the blue. So let's get to it. Thanks for coming along. We are all ready to start laying the glass to close up this through hole so we can drill a new through hole. So first step is we are going to uh, vacuum, surface prep, mix epoxy, and lay the, uh, the sheets in here. Got that one laid, now we'll go outside and do the thickened epoxy and start laying up. We got our paste. That's good. End of the workday, it's been very productive. Let's kind of give the recap. In our engine project, this is thickened epoxy, filling in some voids. So when we lay the new glass box, it adheres better. And then we have the interior pieces laid. Kirsten has been working on her super secret, pro super secret project that we'll show you in a future video. Got the four layers of exterior glass laid. So now maybe two, maybe three, probably two more layers tomorrow to get it up to the depth. But hopefully we get less finishing work on this than when we did the big one because we're more practiced. We're basically a professional fiberglass <laughs> layers now. Absolutely. Hit us up at our website. You can hire us $1,000 an hour. <laughs> It's a new day, yet again. We say that a lot, and I wanted to just talk about that real quickly. So like this engine project, right? It's gonna be about seven days front to end, but none of those seven days is entirely devoted to the engine. We have a lot of different projects going on kind of at the same time, and we choose to present them to you or show them to you on a project basis as opposed to like on a chronological basis. So while these projects are taking a long time and some of them take a really long time, they're not taking as many total hours as it might seem. Anyway, today we're continuing on the engine room stuff. See, look, here's Kirsten working on a separate project from me. So first up, we gotta check this through hall that we laid the glass on last night. Um, we're gonna lay a layer or two more on this, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, we start laying in the new bilge box today. I forgot to take the camera over there before I laid it up. So sorry about that, but it is laid up. Let's take a look. It overall looks pretty good. I think that'll be all the layers we need there. Six inside, two, or sorry, six outside, two inside. And now we turn our attention to the bilge. We need to lay a new fiberglass box, but we didn't want to lay the fiberglass straight on the ballast. So we devised a plan to lay down a piece of Definisil cut to the shape, but first we had to make a stencil. Got the form drawn up, take this out, take the Divinisil up on deck, cut this out, tape it down, cut the Divinisil out and come in here, put it in and trim it to shape. We're 
we're calling it for tonight. We have all of our fiberglass pieces cut out and ready to go for tomorrow. The main reason why we're stopping is because I'm a little concerned about how cold it's gonna get overnight and whether or not that would really mess up the epoxy setting up. So we're just gonna be good with this right now. We're gonna come back tomorrow when it's warmer, lay this down. Tonight we're just gonna enjoy a little bit of R&R. &R. Yo, what's up everybody? It is a, another day in boat life. And we're working away. Already got the fairing compound on the outside. Now, we're inside the boat and Kirsten is toiling away in the engine room. Let's go see what she's up to. Kirsten is wearing her really nice all Hans on deck beanie. And so I took it off. <clears throat> so now she wants to put her hat on, but her hands are all dirty. So I'm gonna come in and make a ponytail and put her hat on her. You think I was gonna try to do it from the front, did you? I thought I did. All right, time is a ticking. How high do you want this? Not high. The super secret job that I was doing yesterday and the day before had me, my neck, very stiff. Mississippi. <laughs> been able to time it out to where we like have two buckets going and are mixing as the other buckets being used and we're timing it just about right. So we're finally starting to get into a groove. It's boat yoga, it's a thing. I call this modified Shavasana. I don't even know if Shavasana is a real yoga pose or if it's just a P90X yoga pose. That looks good. That looks good? I think so. You can put more on this side. This side? <laughs> Success. We got the glass box laid. We feel pretty good about it. Tomorrow we'll come back and paint it gray. And then we'll be ready for, as far as the box goes, for the engine install. So all we have left to do is put in in addition to that, is put in this through haul. That's not gonna take that long either, so. Good morning. It's the next day. The box is set up and cured. Kirsten's gonna sand and paint that today. I'm gonna work on the patch outside. Let's get to work. Today is painting day in the engine room. First, I have to sand the fiberglass, but I have lost my sandpaper. What you don't usually see in the videos is us looking around for five to 10 minutes before every job for all of our supplies because the boat is a mess. So where did I leave my sandpaper? Don't know where it is. Of course, why wouldn't it be on the ground? This product is a two-part epoxy-based barrier coat and primer in one. It's very important to get this process correct because it both protects the underlying fiberglass and allows the bottom paint to adhere properly. Coat one is done. Wait a few hours, do coat two. Got the bilge box all sanded. We're going with Interlux Bilge Coat Gray. We're getting ready to start the painting. Coat one, done. We're gonna do two, probably just two, probably not three. But check it out, I think it looks okay. It's a roughed in glass, but we didn't really care about doing a bunch of finishing work to make it all smooth, because 
It just sits under the engine. So, good stuff. Would you have rather gone with the white paint? Yes. Really? Still? Still, but the gray's good. The gray's good too. All right, so if you didn't know already, there are holes in a boat. I know you think holes will sink a boat, but that's where all of these systems come in. So we gotta get water through the boat or into the boat to run our various systems. So use this, this is called a through haul. What this does is it overlays the haul. We'll show you when we get outside and it allows water to come through the middle, but not around the outside. It's connected to a valve, turn on and off, open and closed. So this can stop the water from coming in or let it in. And when this is attached to here, and then a hose is attached on this backside, we can run water to our sinks, to our air conditioners, to the engine, and we will be good to go. So that's what we're doing today, it's installing this. You ready? So this is when I realized my mistake. Always cut outside in. Instead, I created this rough edge that we'll have to come back and finish at another time. It is a new day. We are at the boatyard kind of early and the crane is on its way to get our new engine loaded onto the boat. I was not prepared for you being the one getting this into the companion way. <laughs> yeah, neither was I. I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah, I can, I can move it. Where's Brian? Brian! Brian! <laughs> Where are the professionals? Dude, check it out! back in this is much smaller than the old Perkins so it came through the companionway much easier now the real fight begins of getting it into the engine room and on its mounts so far this has gone surprisingly easy now the more difficult part is going to be getting this the rest of the way in and getting it lined up and i think we're probably going to have to either get different brackets for the mounts or build out the bed we'll have to see we're still all the, like we're 95 percent on it still okay. right now we're collecting some blocking so we're going to build blocking up off the bottom of the bilge so we can use this jack to lower the engine down slowly so we can check for alignment of the mounts into the bed and to the shaft. Okay, we're gonna have a, a, a little period here of wiggly. So grab this, push down here, twist, right, don't twist, pull. Not pull. Okay. Get her, get her nice and vertical. Mechanic just left. Things are looking pretty good. In the engine compartment in here, we have it kind of in line, in place. We gotta fabricate uh, some engine mount brackets. We have the mounts themselves, but we need the connecting brackets. Progress is going really well. This is very exciting. About to have a new engine all the way in the boat. Good morning. We're back at the boat. Last night, I was up here pulling out the wire run from the old engine control panel. Today, 
we're hopefully gonna get this new control panel installed and the wires ran over towards the engine for final hookup when the mechanic comes back. That means we're gonna fabricate a backing board for it that we can mount it to, and then we're gonna put it in place and run the wires. Kirsten is already hard at work. Let's go take a look at what she's doing. I am scraping off all of the old silicone that was connecting this control panel to the other boat. Down here is where the old panel went, and it was a square. The new one is an oval. So we're going to use some starboard here to cut a backing panel that will cover that square, and we can mount the oval control panel into. Another day, let's get to work. Planning has been done. We are Gonna go cut the starboard to size. Couldn't quite originally figure out how I was gonna get this centered, because we gotta cut out an inside oval. But what I decided is I'm just gonna draw out, masking tape this all up, draw out a grid, um, and then I'll be able to line things up off of that grid. Got our oval drawn in. Now I need to fashion up some sort of clamping system here. Gives me a gap underneath this to be able to cut. Moment of truth, Let's see if the panel fits. <laughs> How often does that happen? First time. I still, still can't believe first go on this. Dave, if you watch this, being more you know, diligent and thoughtful in my planning has paid out. And, uh, I'll give you the credit on that one. Wow. Look at that. I'm like, I'm mildly impressed with, with us right now. Are we boat people now? So good. That was so good. Okay, panel is installed upstairs in the cockpit. Now we're down in the belly of the beast and that those cables come off the back of the panel. We need to run them through this hole, across the ceiling, around, and so that way they come down right over by the control panel because that's where they just like plug and play into the engine. That's it for now. Um, Eventually this is gonna run the rest of the way inside the door frame here and come right down the inside of the control of the uh, electrical box because the plug for the engine is like right back below the electrical box. And we'll just plug them in. Good to go. Because of my earlier mistake on cutting inside out versus outside in, the through haul is not in place and the engine is already in the bay, but the good news is the new engine is a lot smaller. So we have pretty good access to where the through haul goes and we are going to install that through haul right now before we finish the hookup of the engine. What lesson did we learn? Do it right the first time? No, drill from the outside. Drill from the outside in? Yeah, so I didn't really explain that. The problem is that drill bit shears on the back side of the cut and I knew that, I just wasn't thinking. So when I cut from the inside out, as you saw it chipped out, 
but if I would have drilled this way in, any chips would have been on the inside and been fine. I'll be right back. I don't, I hope not. If we need the mallet, something has gone terribly wrong inside, which something could very easily go terribly wrong inside. Which if you've been watching our channel, you know that that never happened. After a brief intermission of us Googling stuff and trying to figure out what we need, which took no more than two, three minutes, Actually, probably took 15 minutes. We're back. Good news is, last time we were at the store, I bought everything we could possibly need. So, trying to figure out what to use as thread sealant. We're gonna go with uh, Permatex thread sealant with PTEF. And this is gonna go like in these threads to lock it up and make it watertight. Finally, I'm just gonna retighten it one more time and then do that off camera. Then I don't have what to do. Let's put this hose into that. How do you feel about the through hole? Do you think it'll keep the water out? Yeah, <clears throat> through hole is fine. It's just uh, annoying that it took so long to get it done. Oh well. This has been a long project. Yep, but it feels really good to have a brand new engine in our boat. It does, it does. So after we got the through hull repaired, after I fixed my mistake of splintering the outside of the hull, um, all that was kind of left was the micro adjustments, getting the engine perfectly lined up, and thankfully we could use the same prop shaft. But the big reason why it took so long to get it perfectly lined up is because all of the brackets between the engine and the engine mounts had to be custom fabricated to get the engine to fit our bed. And that took a lot of time because our mechanic is incredible and he welded them up himself. Yep, so we have not gotten the engine turned on yet, but we will get it hooked up and tweaked and you'll see it running very soon. My neck hurts <laughs> from sanding like and scraping like this for the last two days. Ow! Look, people, for some reason she doesn't want to sit. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I, that's exactly what I thought was going to happen, but I don't know. It's still, <laughs> I still let it happen. <laughs> We've gotten so much content from 